Hey guys, it is Saturday morning and uh, I still got this stuff going on here. You know what I did was most of the meat was gone out of it, most of the vegetables gone, but it left all that really good juice. So I dumped some dried beans in there. Already ate some of it. It's uh, it's really good. So it's about four days going on uh, a ten dollar chuck roast and a few vegetables. I'm trying to eat cheap over here. All right, I've been doing some work today. Not really going after it real hard, but uh, just kind of trying to see what I can get done. Um, Here's some cedar boards that I've uh, ran through the joiner and planer. Um, what I did was I joined one edge and then joined one of the faces, jointed, I guess I should say, and then ran the boards all through the planer uh, and got them to the same thickness. And so only one edge has been joined, jointed, the other edge is still rough. And I went ahead and put a coat of shellac on there. I know everybody's got their own, you know, sort of what's the best finish. And I think it all, you know, looks good. Um, I just decided to try some of it. Jay Bates, I think, is always talking about it. Um, the nice thing about it is it dries fast. So, in fact, it's already dry. Um, so now, and the reason I did that was this cedar, you know, has this sort of purplish looking hue to it when you first mill it. But then after a while, as it's sitting in the air, it starts looking more sort of this color, like a brownish, reddish brownish. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of got a drab look to it. So I thought I'd try to just seal it first, you know, while it was still freshly cut and see if that would preserve the, uh, you know, preserve that sort of purplish looking hue. So, uh, now I'm going to go set up the table saw and just nip the rough edge off of each one and then flip it around and then take an eighth inch off or something, you know, on this edge to get wherever it, the shellac dripped. And then I'll glue it up. And then once it's glued, I'll get the glue off of it and then give it a good sanding. There's a few areas that... <clears throat> Some of the DA, I don't know if you can see it or not, some of the DA marks got left in there. So I'll go sand those out, sand it, you know, down again. Uh, not like completely down, but just run over it with some 220 by hand. Um, get the glue off of it, get uh, anything else off of it, and then put another coat of the uh, shellac on there. And a lot of people don't realize that these tables are not really made for welding. They're actually for woodworking. And they see they've got all these holes in here for the glue to just run through as it squirts through the bottom. So uh, not many people know that. All right, I'll bring it back as I make more progress. All right, let's see if I can do a little bandsaw work on this beam that I'm making to go underneath the beam table. And um, I was showing uh, Russell the the local guy or not didn't live too far away maybe 10 15 miles just so happened he didn't realize i was this close and was watching the videos and came by here and hung out for a little bit and uh, we've remained in contact but i was showing him this that the motor and transmission was were both replaced on this in 2012 you can't really probably make it out too good but you can kind of see i think it says 2012 6 11 12 you can see transmission motor and you can tell this is it was in some kind of production environment this was number 35 of who knows was it 35 of 35 or was it 35 of 100 so um, supposedly you can cut wood on this but I think you're supposed to swap the blade out for a wood blade but we're gonna see if we can cut it with that one in there and um, back here is where you change the speed and I thought it would tell you, no, 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 it's actually on the, let's see. I thought it told us, told you on here what, what it need to be set to for what kind of material. I think it's on here somewhere. Um, let me look for it and I'll, I'll get you set up and, and uh, go from there.
that was going kind of slow, you know, just couldn't pull enough of the material out of there. You see it's a really fine blade on it. Actually, some sections of it are really worn out. So definitely needs a blade on it. If you guys know where I can get one of these blades at, uh, or blade material so I can make my own 14 feet, eight inches. I've looked on eBay and around and I've, I've not been able to find it. So let me know if you know anything about it. All right, been making some progress. I got this uh, thing cut out and milled a little bit. <clears throat> you saw on the bandsaw, we cut this out. So got it glued up now and that's gonna be the beam that goes through the slot in those brackets that I keep showing you. So what I'm doing now is I'm about to run those boards back through and uh, get the opposite end that we jointed earlier um, cut on the table saw so we can go ahead and glue them up. We're going to show this, um, this insert that came with this saw when I bought it. You can see it's uh, in rough shape. It's seen better days. The one thing I was confused about is it's got some little Allen bolts in there and I didn't really know what those were because they, you know, they're kind of protruding through the bottom. And it looks like there's holes here, but I, I don't, you know, I thought maybe something had broke off or whatever, but this just shows you how much I don't know and don't know about table saws, but I bought this many, many months ago. It's a Lee Craft Zero Clearance uh, insert. I think it's made out of phenolic. Um, seems to be very well made, but I just watched the Jay Bates video. He got one of these like three or four years ago. Um, and those, those bolts are uh, adjusting bolts. So you can screw those up or down to get it, you know, get it perfectly level. And then on the sides here, they give you those that you can back out to get your, uh, get it to fit up well, you know, and tight on the sides. So when I try to drop this in, it's, it's really snug. And I'm sure you probably want it that way, but you're supposed to clamp a board over the top of it and then raise your blade up and let it make its own uh, slot in there. So you got a really tight fit then uh, compared to um, this, which looks like has been notched out over the years. I don't think it was probably meant, meant to be that open. And it lets a lot of uh, dust out. And um, when you're, especially if you're not cutting a full board, if you're just taking the edge off of it, when you're running it along, man, that dust is coming back at you like crazy. Um, so I'm hoping to keep more of the dust inside the cabinet. I believe it was Rendrous uh, Rhino that originally pointed me out to at least getting one of these. I didn't even know they existed or a lot of people make their own, I guess, but um, it wasn't that expensive, so it was pretty easy to buy it. But let me get this uh, fitted on here and we'll see if we can get some boards going on it. All right, was well, I was uh, able to uh, take a file and file these edges here. The edges had just been rolled over slightly, I guess from just years of that insert going in and out. I don't know. It didn't need much. I just, just filed on it a little bit and then I took a brush and got all the gunk crap that was just kind of stuck down in the, um, that uh, little shelf there for this to fit. So I got that adjusted so that it fits down in there fairly tight. It's still kind of high though. You know, it's even, I took the leveling screws out of it and it's, there's a ridge right there you can feel, which is, I don't know, you can feel it all the way around it. So I don't know what I should do about that. If I should uh, put it in the mill and just mill some off of the, you know, this, um, this flanged top here um, or what, but Anyway, I may just see how it works like it is. Go ahead and clamp a board across it and then raise the blade up through it. It's pretty cool. They give you a recess, sort of a starter slot there so you don't have to cut all the way through it. And it says you have to use a carbide tip blade, which we do have on here. 
I was just going to show this. Uh, I was putting these screws up that I took out that I'm not going to use. Maybe I'll need them later or whatever. But um, so I got just some miscellaneous fasteners in this drawer, and I knew I'd put some set screws in here before. But um, I just wanted to show this to my European friends that love to call these grub screws. What in the world? A grub screw? Are you kidding me? Look. Set screw. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. All right, got you set up here. Gonna uh, see if we can raise this up. like that blade was turning backwards. See what I mean about the glue dropping through the holes? It's just perfect. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Got these uh, glued up. Got that thing over there glued up. <clears throat> Got some pretty nice fit-ups here. Pretty happy with that overall. Um, with this many boards, I have had bad luck trying to do it all at one time it's a lot easier just to glue two you know basically have two joints than to have uh what five joints so um so when those uh dry here in a little bit a couple hours i'll pull the clamps off and then come glue the middle up and then let it set the rest of the night and then uh maybe we'll clean up out here maybe we won't have a good one guys